Good evening, everyone. As time is getting back into the Lord's Word, just a little while. See what He has to tell us today. And I know it's going to be something good, something great. Something will help us all down through our lives until we go to meet Him. Lord, I pray today and thank you, Lord, one more time for your love, your mercy. We thank you for one more time and opportunity you have given us to get into your word. I pray, O oh Lord, you give us wisdom and knowledge to speak your word with understanding that someone will hear and believe and know how important it is for us to make heaven our home and for you to be our Savior. And to know that no one other way can we go to get to heaven except through and by you. I pray, O oh Lord, you anoint us, anoint the listeners, that we may understand and have a desire to go closer to you. And I pray, O oh Lord, you let us feel your spirit raging down within, that we can know that we are your child. And we ask these things, Lord, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your mercy. We're going to be reading this time in 1 John, the book before you over towards the Revelations, and the fifth chapter, King James Version Bible. And the first word is whosoever. Aren't we glad today that we are the one, the one of the whosoever he was speaking of? Whoso, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that beget loveth him also, that is, begotten of him. Every one of us that have begot loved ones, we are also begotten of him. To by this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his Commandments. Three, for this is love, the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. We should keep his commandments with joy, knowing he is our keeper, he is our Lord, he is our Savior, and he's our all in all and everything we need. And he will go with us all the way, even to the end of the world. For, for, for whoso, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is a victory that come, overcometh the world, even our faith. That's why we can sing the old song, Victory. Only Jesus can bring our victory. He is our victory. He is our overcomer in everything we need to overcome our troubles and trials and things that come along in this world. He's the one we're to lean on and believe on and keep our faith in and not waver, knowing he is the keeper of the soul and he will keep it steadfast until the end if we will allow him to. Verse 5, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? 6, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. 
Let me tell you, my friends, we have no truth in this world today except the Word of God and His Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us through these things down here. All troubles and struggles, our trials, our seem like sorrows and our mountains seem seem to come without end but our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ through and by that Holy Spirit will lead us through these things that we and we one day after a while if we hold on to him we'll overcome and be more than conquerors and in him through his love and through his mercy and his grace that he has extended to us. Seven, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are in, and these three are one. They're one equal. They are 100% total unity with each other. Therefore, they are one. Verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one, total 100% unity with each other. Therefore, what one says, it's all said. What one does, they all do. It's all the Spirit of God, that Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit of God that leads us, directs us, and will teach us many things. We'll let it lead us and teach us. And without the shedding of blood, there would have been any remission for our sins. But Jesus, our Savior, he went to the cross and died for us and shed his blood. He shed that water come forth. In other words, to wash and make us clean. But let me tell you, my friend, without that blood, we could not have eternal life. Unless we've been washed in that blood, we cannot be saved. Verse 9, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. If we can believe a preacher at the speaking, also let us realize that God is greater than the man, than the men of the preacher that's speaking, or teacher that's speaking and teaching the word. But God is greater than, for this is the witness of God, which he had testified of his Son. In other words, if we don't follow his Son, we don't follow his word, then we will not make it. But in order to follow his word and be obedient to that word, we have to be saved. He's talking about believing. Many people believe, but what do they believe? Do they believe on the things around them? Do they believe on the Son of God that died on the cross? to save us from our sins. 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. If we don't believe the Word, then we won't believe the Son. If we don't believe the Son, then we won't believe His Word. And if we don't believe the Son and the Word, then we don't believe in God. It's just that plain. It's that simple. But people don't want to hear it today because it's a plain, simple truth. So plain that a five-year-old school child can understand what he's saying to us today. Then people get milk and, and angry over someone that tells them the truth from God's Word. How do I know? Because I've been in the presence of some of it. And I know what they'll do. But God is greater than all. He always knows how to deliver us from those things and keep us walking for Him and with Him. 
through the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, guide us. Eleven, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. It's time people waked up to the truth of the gospel. We can't get to heaven unless we go through His Son. By the way, off the old rugged cross. Twelve, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. In other words, if they will not accept the Son, they can't accept the Father, for they are one, and unity as one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they are one and as one, in perfect unity and harmony. Unless a church is in unity with each other, they're not in unity with God. Without unity, we cannot walk with God and please God because we've got to be united in unity of love and peace and joy that comes through the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the Son of God that He gives us. But those that don't want him don't have eternal life. Those that won't accept him and keep turning him away, they don't yet have life. But they must come to him and be saved in order to have life. Thirteen. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of of the Son of God. How many times has he mentioned the Son of God in this chapter? He's, he's announced it so many times. He's spoken so many times that we should, we should never forget all of our eternal, all of our Christian life is based upon the Son of God. He must dwell in our hearts and us in Him in order us to follow Him and be a Christian and be saved as people say they are. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. But how many times do we ask for something that's not His will? How many times we say when we pray, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. How many times do we say, if it be the Lord's will, I'll do this, I'll do that. How many times do we speak, let people know it's by God, the Lord's will, we even live and exist from one day to the next. Now listen. 15, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. If we'll walk and live in a way that we know he hears our prayers. Now I'm going to read these two verses again so we won't miss what he's saying. 14. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, 
whatsoever, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. He will increase our faith. He'll make our faith be stronger. He'll make uh, us our want to live closer to him stronger. He'll give us a greater desire to follow him and obey his commandments because we love him and we know we're securing him and we know he will answer our prayer if it's according to his will. 16. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death, that it, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Even death itself is a sin, and it don't help us pray for that sin because it all must die. But a prayer is supposed to be for those that are yet living, that God will lift them up, that he will shine into their hearts and save them and draw them to him and make them a part and give them a part in the eternal life so we can all live together in heaven someday. And if we see the man sin, we will forgive him and still tell him how much Jesus loves him. 17. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death, which also spoken of, the sin that we all must die. He said the sin of death is a sin. But we cannot help that sin. We cannot help that death. But God understands it all. And we leave that part up to him. 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. This is the soul that's born again. It ain't the flesh. It's the soul and spirit soul of man. The soul of a woman, a child, boy, or girl. That is what, that don't sin, but the flesh will. But that soul won't sin. Eighteen, we know that for whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not, he'll keep him, he'll stay away from places he don't need to go. He'll try to not hear things he hear in other words, things he don't want to hear, he'll try to stay away from them. But there's so many things and stuff going on in the world today. You can't keep from hearing things you don't want to hear. But God knows how to deliver us from them and lead us through them and away from them and cleanse us and keep us fit subject for the kingdom of heaven that we may do work in his vineyard while we linger here on this earth before he calls us away to meet him. And let me tell you, my friends, every, somebody, someday, everybody, every soul is going to meet him. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. He is who he says he is. And they're going to know that he was from the beginning and still is. But how many is going to bow and confess and not be ready to meet him let me tell you, my friends, today, somewhere or other, we're going to give God the glory, whether it's glorifying Him to be the Son of God, or we have to recognize Him that we that He is a Savior, and we have to depart from Him forevermore, but yet we all have to bow and confess that He is God. Nineteen and we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. How wicked is the world today? 
We don't have to spell it out. We can look around. We can see it going on every day of our life. You can't turn on the news, listen to the news, let you find some disaster, killing, a fire, flood, you name it, storm that we never heard of before, fires, earthquakes, you name it, it goes on and on, and people get more wicked every day of their lives. And it's getting to be so wicked, we don't want to even go shopping for groceries and pay our bills. We're afraid we'll see something we don't want to see or hear something we don't want to hear. That will cause us to stumble and fall. But yet we got to trust God that he will lead us through those things and make a way for us to escape when we happen to be there. 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding. We know that Jesus Christ came to the earth, this earth. He left us word. He spoke of understanding, left us words that we could also understand that we need him more than anything in this world. That we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true. In Jesus, that is true. Even in his son Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Don't worship anything if it's not God. Don't put anything between us and the Lord, our master. If we worship other things instead of God, we don't have no right to call him master. Because he said, why calleth me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I ask you or I tell you? He said, on that day, many would say, have not I done many wonderful things? I have cast out the devils and done other marvelous works in your name. But he was going to say to them, I know you not. Depart from me, you workers are iniqui of iniquity. And he goes on to say, These are they that testify of me. So who are we going to lean on? Who do we believe? Do, believe, do we believe the Son of God hit Jesus? If, and do we believe in God the Father that sent his Son to this earth to die for us? If we don't, we need that we don't believe in the Father or the Son. This is not my word. This is God's word. And I'm going to read 20 and 21 again, and I'll close at this time. 20, and we know that the Son of God is come. Yes, he came down here. He died on that old rugged cross. And he rose the third day. And after certain days, he ascended back into heavens and took his seat on the right hand of the Father. And today he intercedes for us when we go astray and we pray to him, ask us, ask him to forgive us. He re he relates that message. Unto the Father, and the Father forgives us because he honors the request of his Son. And we know that the, that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. He sealed it with that amen. If we're going to make it all the way home, then we got to be born again 
and accept his son as our own personal savior and not the world because the world cannot save us only the son can save us and set us free he will forgive us of our sins wash us with his blood and make us clean and fit subject for a, a city called heaven the place he went to prepare for us a long time ago when he said, I'll go to way to prepare a place for you where I go. And when I, I'll come again and I'll claim you into myself that where I am, there you may be also. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's once again we come to you, Lord, to thank you, Lord, for many blessings. We thank you for another day that you've given us, Lord, and, and to get into your word. Lord, we thank you for every word you've given us. We thank you for your message. We thank you for your word that corrects us and leads us in the right direction. Lord, I pray you touch every one of us and give us more and greater desire to follow you and draw lean on you and draw closer to you because help us to know you are our salvation and that we are secure in your hands and that we can always lean on you and you'll carry us through You'll help us overcome all our troubles and trials and sorrows. Although we go through th through some, you'll help us overcome. And through those troubles and trials, we are to grow stronger in you and desire you more and more each day. Lord, I pray, O Lord, for those that are lost today, they'll know you as their Savior, Lord. I pray you reach down and touch them and save them today and send your drawing spirit to them and give them one more opportunity even though they've turned you away, that they may be saved. I pray, O oh Lord, for those who are sick and afflicted in body, O oh Lord, you reach down, heal, deliver, touch, and set free if it be your will. And Lord, if it's not your will for them, be, be healed, Lord, I pray. You make their pain easier to endure and bear, but also keep in mind that you are their Savior, and they have eternal home with you in heaven one day when this life is over. Now, Lord, as we come to the close, Lord, you call us home, Lord, I pray that you will welcome us home where we can bow our heads and give you the praise forevermore that we are not able and don't know how to give today. These things we ask in the lovely and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love.